This presentation explains the difference between wikis and blogs and explains how you might use them in medical education. For more step-by-step -step instructions, please refer to the screencast on wikis and blogs coming soon. To understand what is different about wikis and blogs, you first have to understand what is similar about them, and then you can see how they can be used in medical education. Wikis and blogs are similar in that there are both online environments where students and faculty can post and share information. What is different about them is that wikis are mostly collaborative, while blogs are not as collaborative, relying on feedback to further education. Now this is a typical example of a wiki page on the UBC wiki. There's the subject heading at the top, a table of contents, and a search bar on the left side. Most wiki pages look something like this. To get to the UBC wiki, simply type in wiki.ubc.ca and you'll be taken to the UBC wiki page where you can start creating wikis or search for wikis that already exist. But what is a wiki? The wiki refers to the quick, simple, and collaborative creation of web pages. But when, why, and how do we create them? I'll explain further. Now here again we're looking at a UBC wiki page. This one is fictitious. Now here we see the definition of stethoscope that has been entered in this case in this wiki by a student. Now it's correct, but could be made more accurate. Another student logs in. They can then delete the definition and replace it with something a lot more accurate. Other students can then come back and edit and put in further information. The process goes on. Now as you can see, the stethoscope definition has been replaced in this wiki page. Over time, sections of this wiki page can be organized and added to as students and faculty see fit. So as you can see, wikis evolve through peer review to become more accurate over time. The other thing that wikis do especially well is they help to form interconnections between concepts. This happens through hyperlinks. Now here we have again our definition of a stethoscope. Now another student comes along and sees that there are other pages devoted to lung and heart sounds. So they come along, they delete what they need to, and they replace these words with hyperlinks. Now another user can come along and just click on lung. This will take them to another page that somebody else has created, definition of lung. Over time, other users come back and start to replace other terms with hyperlinks. And over time, it starts to become a linked resource to so many other bits of information. So that stethoscope is placed in context with everything else. Now let's look again at a more specific example on the UBC Wiki. Now this one, the Indie course, is a course for first and second year med students. Now if we look more closely at the page, we can see the possibilities inherent in wikis. For example, as we said, different people collaborate to improve this page. Such as, at the top here, we have the course objectives, which has been entered by the block chair. Administrative staff can enter class schedules, while students and faculty can link to resources and articles and other objects that might help with their medical education. Now over time, the wiki becomes an important resource with all these different groups of people collaborating to make these pages better. Wiki means quick. It's very easy to update. Now let's look what students and faculty have entered into this page when they find articles that are beneficial to students. They simply type them in and hyperlink them to external sources. But over time, you see that students and faculty put in many different articles for many different reasons. As you can see now, it becomes a little bit overwhelming. There's a lot of articles on a lot of different subjects. Now another student or faculty comes along and then they form some categories. Again, it's very simple and easy to use. So forming categories and organizing this information, it's very simple. Now over time, these articles become part of another wiki page to further their knowledge of indie clinical skills. Here's another area where a wiki might be very useful. Frequently asked questions for all students and faculty to see. This limits the time 
that faculty and staff spend emailing individual students to answer their questions. Now, the more that people use wikis, the better they get. The more information is on them, the more they're hyperlinked to other articles, other wiki pages, and the more resources that are available for students, staff, and faculty. So only UBC students can edit UBC wiki pages. Password protected through the CWL login. In contrast to wikis, blogs are very different. It's like a journal. They're great for sharing individual experiences with a group and where students and tutors can also communicate through feedback. They're also great for reflective journaling, such as during clinical rotations, and can also be used to hold a portfolio of academic and volunteering development, or simply for listing announcements, such as conferences and speakers. Now let's look at an example of a blog. Now this one has been created to show research opportunities for students. So we have the title at the top, we have the entry title, of the specific entry, summer students internships announce, the author, the date it was entered, and then the body of the text. Now here we have another example of a blog. This one was created so students could share their clinical experiences with their tutors and other students. If we look at the bottom of this page, students can get feedback through comments. Now if we were to click on this comment section, we find one student, now he's written how much this subject has interested him. Now faculty has also commented on this entry, further directing this student towards other educational resources. Entering comments is very simple. You just enter your name, your email address, and your comment, and hit send, and it appears on the blog comment section. As you can see, the comments have been updated to show that there's an additional comment on this blog. If you would like to receive these comments by email so you don't have to check the blog every day, you can get an RSS feed. Once you get an RSS feed linked to your email account, you receive blog postings in your email the way you'd receive any message. So wikis versus blogs. You can edit, collaborate, they evolve over time, and they become hyperlinked. Blogs more like a journal where journal writers can receive comments, feedback, and have their comments linked through RSS feeds directly to their email. Now all these wikis and blogs are very easy, simple to use, and adaptable however you'd like to use them. For more tutorials and screencasts, stay tuned and come back often to this webpage.